And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now I'm pretty sure every single Lions fan can come to the conclusion that last year the offense wasn't very good. The offense was extremely, extremely underwhelming in the 2021 season, being slow and methodical at times, but also just simply being bad at others, stalling out in very poor situations, running the ball on a third and long, and essentially sacrificing certain drives. And at the end of the day, the Lions did not score enough points in 2020. One And the Lions saw this. Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell came together at the end of the season and they said the offense wasn't good enough. We didn't score enough points. We didn't win enough games. How do we do that? And with additions on the offensive side of the ball, players coming back and a brand new offensive coordinator with a brand new offensive philosophy, we have a little bit of a look of what the 2022 Detroit Lions offense may look like as the regular season gets underway. And today, we are going to talk about just that. We're going to take a look at the 2022 offense, take a look at this new look Lions offense and see what the differences may be and why the Lions could have a far more explosive offense in 2022 than they did in 2021. Now, with all that being said and all the intro stuff out of the way, let's get right on in to taking a look at a potential look at the 2022 Detroit Lions offense. Now, when I say the Lions offense wasn't good a season ago, I mean they were one of the worst offenses in the NFL, scoring just 19.1 points per game, ranking 25th in the NFL, having just a 34.7% third down conversion rate, ranking last in the NFL, converting in the red zone just 46.7% of the time, ranking 31st in the NFL, and having the second most delay of game penalty in the entirety of the NFL. The Detroit Lions were the slowest offense in the NFL a season ago. They were the slowest offense out of all 32 teams, and they were arguably the worst offense in the NFL bar none. And I know statistically, right, they weren't last in points score. They weren't last in points per game, anything like that. They were I, in my opinion, one of the bottom five offenses in the NFL. They couldn't score consistently, they couldn't get big chunk yardage, and they had a lot of trouble converting on third down in major red zone situations. It got better near the end of the season, but uh, for the season in its entirety, they were not very good at it. Now, this had a lot of contributing factors to it, right? The offensive struggle was not solely because of Jared Goff or solely because of Anthony Lynn. It had a lot of different factors, everything ranging from, right, the offensive play calling, that does fall on Anthony Lynn. Quarterback confidence, right? Jared Goff didn't really feel confident, didn't really have the chemistry with these guys yet to trust them to go get the football down the field a rotation of offensive line and weapons right frank ragnall missed time taylor decker missed time pretty sure a majority of our offensive line was shifting and changing near the end of the season and then you know you take a look at tyra williams was your wide receiver one going into the season then he got hurt then cephas emerged then cephas got hurt and then st brown emerged and then they signed josh reynolds Cleef Raymond had up and down weeks. It was a rotating door of weapons and offensive linemen for Jared Goff and the offensive coordinator. And when you don't have a when you don't have a constant number one weapon, right? When you don't have a that guy that's gonna be there week in and week out for you to build chemistry with, for you to build a connection with, it's hard for your quarterback to trust players down the field when he didn't 
play with them in the preseason when he didn't play with them in training camp right that chemistry wasn't there that connection wasn't there between him and his wide receivers until later in the nfl season and you know the play calling duties changed throughout the season and there's a lot of different things that changed that you know at the beginning of the season were different to the end of the season but brad holmes and the detroit lions took note of this brad holmes very clearly had an identity that he wanted the detroit lions to have last year and they did not have said identity and you can see through free agency through the draft through coaching hires so you can see the kind of offense that the detroit lions want to have they want to win shootouts they want to be able to put up 30 40 points a game they want to be one of the highest scoring offenses in the nfl and they want to do so with major chunk yardage and major explosive plays they signed players in free agency like dj chark and drafted players like jameson williams both wide receivers that are six foot two or bigger and run four three low four three speed or faster they want big explosive players that can take the top off of a defense and they want to give golf all the weapons possible to throw down the football field to get explosive chunk plays to get you know those 30 40 yard plays down the field to get those long touchdowns long one play touchdowns that are back breaking to defenses right he wants the offense that when the defense gets a turnover they take a big shot one play and pick up 50 yards to just really grab the momentum away from the opposing team and they did that this season they are building an offense that is capable of those big plays they are building an offense that is capable of putting up a lot of points and winning shootouts and putting up over 20 points a game we talked about a while ago if the lions averaged just one more point per game they would have won nearly six games last season they were just not there offensively right if they had averaged 20 points a game which is just one more point per game than they did in the regular or than they did in the actual regular season they would have beaten cleveland they would have beaten pittsburgh and they would have beaten chicago which is three more wins they would have been six six nine and one six ten and one they would have been six ten and one on the nfl season if they had scored just 20 points per game and they in going into the offseason that was their big thing they wanted to build an offense that when the defense holds the opponent to under 20 points when the defense plays a really good game and holds cleveland to 13 holds pittsburgh to 16 they want an offense that can capitalize on that and put up more points they want an offense that can put up 25 to 30 points a game because if they did that then the offense and the Lions look like a true playoff contender and not just a team that can survive some close games. Now, when Dan Campbell talks about this new look offense, he talks a lot about the tempo. He talks a lot about the efficiency play by play, saying that they want to be a more efficient offense, that they're going to add the hurry up element that's going to throw off defenses, that's going to make it hard for defenses to react. And when you go into a hurry up defense with DJ Chark, Jamison Williams, and Amon Ross St. Brown as your three receivers with TJ Hawkinson and DeAndre Swift, that's a lot of weapons for Jared Goff to work with. And that's a lot of weapons for the opposing defense to cover in a hurry-up situation where you're going to cause a little bit of confusion, you're going to cause some communication errors, right? It is a recipe for success, the hurry-up offense with all the weapons that Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes brought in this offseason. You know, you look at all the true offensive additions that they made, Ben Johnson was the first one. Ben Johnson took over offensive play calling by the end of the regular season and had Jared Goff in the final seven games looking like a true NFL starting quarterback. I would say Jared Goff to end the season in his last seven games was a top 15 quarterback in the NFL, top half quarterback in the NFL, wasn't quite at top 10, but won the Lions three football games while playing extremely, extremely efficient football. Ben Johnson is the new offensive coordinator, and we've already heard players like Amon Ross St. Brown come out and say, this offense is different. This offense is revamped, and we're going to be very, very good next season. All right, so Ben Johnson's the first big addition. DJ Chark was the second one, a former Pro Bowl wide receiver that's six foot three and runs a four three, four, 40 yard dash with good hands, good routes, and good body control in the air. He is going to be a huge wide receiver one, be a huge X wide receiver for Jared Goff to throw to. Somebody that can create separation, somebody that's not afraid of contact, somebody that is just all around a very, very well-rounded and good wide receiver that will come in and make an immediate impact as wide receiver one. Jamison Williams, a wide receiver the Lions traded up for to get Jamison Williams from Alabama, who may not have run a 40-yard dash 
Nash, but it was easily the fastest and most explosive player in college football a season ago. And a lot of people speculate that if he had run the 40 yard dash, he would have broken the 40 yardage record. That's the kind of explosiveness the Lions added to their offense. On top of that, TJ Hawkinson is returning after missing time a season ago. Frank Ragnow, the best center in the NFL, is returning after missing a significant time a season ago. And overall, the chemistry for this team is going to be significantly improved from where it was to start the 2021 season, right? Jared Goff now has chemistry with St. Brown and Cephas and Raymond and, and Reynolds, right? He has connection with these wide receivers and he's going to have a full offseason, have a full preseason of training with DJ Chark and maybe Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams' chemistry may take a little bit longer to sync up because he's not going to necessarily be 100% throughout the entirety of training camp, but that connection will come sooner or later. And in the meantime, you still have DJ Chark and Josh Reynolds and Sam Brown and Cephas and Raymond and, you know, Pimpleton and Benson and all these wide receivers. And then you have TJ Hawkinson and James Mitchell that have chemistry now. Now you have DeAndre Swift, who's got a good feeling of how Jared Goff throws the football. It is a lot of weapons for Jared Goff to work with and the chemistry is coming together because all of these guys have now played together for an entire season with the, obviously the exception of the rookie and the free agent addition. But looking at the weapons that this Lions team have, DJ Chark, Jameson Williams and Khalif Raymond all have 4-3 speed. St. Brown, Cephas, and Reynolds are all just really, really good, well-rounded receivers that have good chemistry with Jared Goff. And Jared Goff, those were his top three weapons a season ago from the wide receiver room. You bring back TJ Hawkinson and James Mitchell, who are both really, really good receiving tight ends, and add that to a backfield of DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams, who are both very good running backs and can absolutely affect the game through the air. Plus, you add to that five potential pro bowlers on the offensive line as maybe the best offensive line in football, right? Taylor Decker's played at a pro bowl level. Jonah Jackson just went from a pro bowl, just came from a pro bowl. Frank Rag now went to a pro bowl in 2020, right? Halapaloi Vitae Vitae didn't give up a sack a season ago, and Penny Sewell was certainly good enough and will likely be good enough next year to make the NFL pro. Pro Bowl by himself. You have five Pro Bowl caliber players on your offensive line with all of these explosive weapons and a lot of people are going to say okay but Jared Goff isn't the quarterback that can utilize all of these weapons. That also isn't true as Jared Goff just a few years ago is the same quarterback that put up over 4,600 yards and 32 touchdowns to just 12 interceptions in 2018 with the Los Angeles Rams and I would even make the argument that these weapons are better than the surrounding cast he had in Los Angeles. The offensive line is better. The weapons are more explosive. The running back is better in the receiving game, right? Todd Gurley was great. Offensive player of the year and all that. I think as far as a passing game, the Lions weapons are better than what Jared Goff had in 2018. Now, will the play calling be on the same level as Sean McVay? That is something that we are going to have to see. That's something that we're going to have to talk about and something we're going to have to wait and see on. But the weapons are are the same. The confidence is back for Jared Goff. That was half the season and half the battle a season ago was getting Jared Goff his confidence back and Dan Campbell did that. Dan Campbell put faith in Jared Goff. Dan Campbell put his his time, his effort and gave Jared Goff his confidence back and you saw it at the end of the season. Jared Goff was slinging the football. You saw at the end of the season Jared Goff making more difficult throws, making some riskier throws. Right? You saw him being a little bit more confident, a little bit more accurate and yes, the mistakes were still there here and there, but the good play at the end of the season heavily outweighed the bad play by Jared Goff, and that all came with confidence. So you're going into the 2022 season with a brand new, really good, young-minded offensive coordinator. You're going in with all these explosive weapons, three wide receivers that run under and run sub 4 three 40 yard dashes. You have three more wide receivers that have great, phenomenal chemistry with Jared Goff. You have a really good receiving running back, two really good receiving tight ends, and a top five offensive line with five potential pro bowlers on it. This is an offense that can put up points. This is an offense that, that will succeed in the 2022 season unless injuries strike heavily, but we can't predict injuries. Injuries are going to happen for sure, but at the end of the day, expect the Lions to have an explosive offense. If the Lions finish a top five offense next season, I truly wouldn't be surprised. Jared Goff is a good enough quarterback to lead this offense to a top five finish, a top 10 finish in the NFL, and they have put together a roster with all the weapons Jared Goff would ever need to succeed. 
So all that being said, that is up for you guys today. Just wanted to take a potential look at the offense, take a look at the up-tempo that the, that the Lions are talking about, right? Dan Campbell, Ben Johnson talking about that up-tempo, talking about the big play wide receivers that they added, and talk about why Jared Goff might realistically have one of the best seasons of his career next season. But with all that being said, that is up for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching, and until next time, and as always, go Lions!